It's Stacy coming to you from Michigan. Hey girls, it's Abby in State College, Pennsylvania. And I'm Casey coming at you live from Cincinnati, Ohio. Remember, we are live every single weekday at noon with a homeschool elective just for you. And today we are doing creative arts. We want to help you get out of the box, um, maybe help you feel a little less cooped up in your house. And we're going to be making these super cool things called window clings with the help from our very own Sarah Codner and her sister Elizabeth Stover. They're going to teach us how to make them and it's going to be such a blast. Yes, awesome. So first, let's make sure we have everything we need. So here's what you need for today's creative arts lesson. You need white glue, dish soap, food coloring, plastic page. Oh, not plastic page protectors. I think we're going to use either saran wrap or uh, sandwich bags. So those will work yeah. and a paintbrush. So make sure you have those things with you right now. All right, we are so excited to see you guys decorate your windows, but in order for us to do that, you have to ask your mom to take a photo of you and post it on our Facebook page or post it on Instagram and tag us because we want to see it. It's a lot of fun when we get to see you guys doing all these activities. It's an encouragement to us because we don't feel like we're talking to thin air. It's fun to hear from you guys. Um, and when you do that, you can look like this. Today we want to feature a really special girl, Leah. This is her. Where is she? Leah, look at her. 
Cooking up some hamburger. I know that looks actually really delicious. I'm starving. Uh, Her mom, Jennifer, (laughs) wrote this to us. She said, Leah cooked supper for the whole family, giving mom and dad a much needed break. She's also been been super helpful with loading and unloading of the dishwasher and a few other household chores. A couple of weeks ago, Leah handmade some cards with scripture verses and dropped them in neighbors' mailboxes to let them know they are being prayed for. That's That's so sweet. We love that, Leah. Way to go. Keep it up. We're proud of you. Super cute glasses, too. Yeah, yeah I agree. I would. She was killing me. <laughs> okay. All right, Chrissy. What is the time? You know what it's time Stacey. for, bro. I'm sorry. Oh, Stacey. I thought you said Stacey. 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 <laughs> it is time for Freedom Stories. So these are when you guys send us your stories um, about just how God is setting you free from your anxiety, from uh, any fear, any bad emotions you have, and just what he's teaching you during this time. So we like to use our key Bible verse, which um, is found in John chapter eight and is verses 31 through 32. And it says, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. So we always like to remind you girls, we like to remind ourselves that spending time daily in God's word is what sets us free from anything we're facing. He gives us his truth by um, just diving into his word. So our first freedom story is from AJ and it says, last night I was facing a fear about the coronavirus. I was also sad that school got canceled for the rest of the year. I decided to flip through the Bible, hoping that God would show me just the right verse to help me overcome my fear and sadness. Then I remembered a verse I had memorized in second grade. The verse I memorized was the whole chapter of Psalm 139. So I read the chapter verse by verse, highlighting and taking notes on things that stood out to me. Reading this chapter reminded me that God is always with me no matter where I go, and he always has a plan. We have to remember that there is a reason God is letting this sickness happen, and we need to put our trust in him, especially in times like this. And then her mom also wrote, AJ came to me one evening and told me she had dissected some Bible verses. I'm a science teacher, so I was amused and asked her to explain. She showed me how she had used different colored pens to mark the verses that stood out to her. She had also written notes and asked Siri to help her define words that were unfamiliar. She had picked apart the chapter verse by verse to study it more closely. Just what a dissection really is. I wanted to thank you for coming alongside me to model a love for God's word and provide engaging tools for AJ to use in her own personal Bible study. It's encouraging It's encouraging to see how God is using your ministry to raise up the next generation of Christ followers. Oh, that was nice. She encouraged us too. But um, I love that. That's so cool that AJ was able to use that. And we, I think we don't realize how much of God's word we do have inside our minds and our hearts. Just from back in the day, the fact that she was able to like remember that she had memorized that verse in second grade and then pull it out. And that's why we do that. So we can use his word when we need it. You know, it's such that's a cool awesome. Thing. I have a funny thing about a verse. Um, well, it. not funny. So yesterday, um, somebody was talking about Romans 10, 9. And I was like, wait, I know that verse. How do I know that verse? And it's because in the salvation message during our true girl shows, I say it every single time, (laughs) but I was just like, whoa, I don't know. It's just like a really cool moment because it's something, you know, that I had memorized that was coming up outside of the purpose of me memorizing it. So it's just cool how God uses, um, memorizing scripture to actually, like it actually does show up again and you can use it it's just really cool sorry I just when, we were, when I was in high school um I went to a private high school here in state college and um we would memorize verses by um questions so we would have like there would be a question like um oh I can't think of one right now or like what is um the love of money and then the verse would be the love of money is the root of all evil and like so then whenever you hear someone ask a question like in real time you mm-hmm. your first thought is like oh i have a verse that i memorized about this and i thought that, that was a really cool way to oh, do it that's so uh, that's a really cool way to do it yeah i've never heard of that that's good yeah um so yeah we like to hear you guys' freedom story see we just went on that whole tangent because we <laughs> we all kind of experienced the same things with that so it's cool when you guys share those with us and we can connect in that way 
Um, so now if you're wondering how you can get your freedom story to us, the first thing you got to do is start reading your Bible every day. And then the second thing you want to do is find some verses that help you feel joyful and hopeful and peaceful and just confident that God is in control of everything. And then the third thing we want you to do is send it into us. And I think you do that at mytruegirl.com slash live. I think that's what we're doing now. You can also put it in the comments, but if you could send it to mytruegirl.com slash live, we'll um, get that freedom story and we'll pick one to use on each show. So make sure you do that. And of course, you guys know at the end of every class, we have a prayer time. So go ahead and post your prayer request in the comment section on YouTube or on Facebook, and we'll make sure that we pray for them today. So oh, that's awesome. All right. So thank you, Stacy, for leading us in our freedom stories. Now I am going to lead all of you um, to our creative arts time. So believe it or not, I said earlier, Sarah Codner, she's our very own because she was actually on tour with us this past year as our very lovely resource manager. So if you bought a t-shirt, short t-shirt, t-shirt or a tiny panda, it was probably from the beautiful Sarah. And she's also here with her sister, Elizabeth Stover. But I'm actually gonna tell you guys a secret. There are actually three people in the room right now. Can you tell us why, Elizabeth? Because in about three weeks, ah! Baby Stover will be appearing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so amazing. All right, guys. Well, I'll leave you three right to the crafts. Take it away. Thanks, Hi, guys. We are so excited to be here with you today. And it's really special for me because I just keep picturing a lot of your faces that came through um, at our events. And I'm hoping that you're listening today. So know that I'm thinking of you. And even if you weren't uh, um, able to make it to one of our live events, um, maybe I'll get to meet you sometime in the future. It'd be awesome. So today, I'm so happy because my sister, the artist, she teaches elementary art to how many students? Uh, around 600, maybe a little more. 600 students. So you know, all of you are at home now doing your own um, schooling and maybe you miss your friends, you miss your teachers. Elizabeth, your teachers miss you too, I promise. Yeah, Elizabeth misses her students. She misses um, teaching them and being creative with them every day. So this is a really fun way. Maybe you even have some students watching today, maybe. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to Elizabeth because she is the one who's going to be leading this event. So um, you're going to see our faces for a little while while we um, show you the supplies and everything. And then we're going to put the camera down on our hands so you can um, watch along with us and see what you need to do. All right. So we're making window clings. And I promise we have tested out the window clings. They really do work. Um, I'm not so much of a measuring person. So I kind of guess, and all of these have turned out. Um, for, first of all, you'll need some white glue. I really like Elmer's glue all, but whatever glue you have, you'll need some dish soap, just like a teeny tiny bit of the dish soap. You will need some kind of food coloring. You can use the gel food coloring, like you need a toothpick for. Um, as I've been working with it, I've found McCormick's is awesome. Uh, any color in a variety of colors or variety of bottles and something to mix them on, whether you want to use like a glass bowl, just make sure you wash it very well. Uh, or you can use like a paper plate or a paper bowl, something to mix it with. If you're using the gel uh, food coloring, you can just mix it with a toothpick plastic spoons, regular spoons, whatever you've got on hand. You might also want some cookie cutters. Um, these help keep the designs in a set shape, but you can also use a paintbrush and paint your designs on, especially if you want to paint something, want to create something you don't have a cookie cutter for. So we have a couple of colors set to go. We have some yellow and some green already mixed up. Um, now, one of my favorite colors is purple, and I don't happen to have any purple food coloring, but as I'm sure most of you know, we can mix two primary colors to make a secondary color. What an art feature. <laughs> 
Um, and probably most of you even know which two colors to mix. So I'm going to take some red and some blue to make some purple. Looking good. Then you just take that in your container and however you would like, mix it all up. Uh, sometimes I think purple is one of the trickiest colors to make. So I had about three drops of red and two to three drops of blue. And that's that's turned that out pretty, pretty well. Pretty. Purple. Also, these the glue dries, it turns clear. So your colors will darken. For mm -hmm. example, here's a green. Yeah, here we have, a, we have a little teapot that we made. We made a tulip and they did turn out a lot darker. But when your window clings are hanging in the window and the light shines on them, that lightens them up too. So these are some of our examples. Um, when you use the cookie cutter, it usually turns out quite a bit thicker. I don't know if you can see that, but it turns out thicker um, and it's easier to pull off the windows. When you use a paintbrush, they're a little bit thinner. Um, and I had to use a plastic spoon to kind of um, peel it off, but it worked like all you had to do is get a little corner loose and it came right off. The other thing is um, if you, um, when your window clings are drying, if they're not sticking to the window, number one, We've had a lot of snow in Pennsylvania this past week. It's kind of crazy. <clears throat> I'm sure some of you are experiencing that as well. But if it's, if it's hard to get the um, window clings to stick on the window, you can just kind of blow on the window a little bit or wait till it warms up. Um, and if it's, if it's still not sticking, sometimes if you just kind of put a little, just a couple drops of water on your finger and put it on the back, and then stick it to the window, that helps too. So just some tips um, in case they aren't working out quite as, as you wanted them to. So for our window clings, we are using page protectors. However, we've practiced with some other things like uh, this was the lid off of some produce, a plastic lid off produce, that works. Uh, sandwich baggies work great and um, saran wrap also works. The only thing with a saran wrap is make sure that it's really nice and flat. Sometimes otherwise your window clings get a little crinkly and they're harder to stick. So once you've got your colors, whether you want to do create something that's just one color, whether you want to create something that's multiple colors, you are ready to start creating your window clings. <clears throat> so I'm gonna start by painting. Um, and a lot of people around our area have been putting rainbows on their windows just to kind of brighten people's day. Um, when it's been nice enough out, you'll see a lot of people taking walks and things. So people can look for these rainbows in other in houses' windows. So I'm going to start with a rainbow now. As you're creating your design, if you're using paintbrushes, you do want to do a couple of layers. If you don't have it thick enough, if it's really thin, it um, sometimes dries and wrinkles up just a little bit. So you do want to create a couple of layers or go over it a couple of times, sorry. And you can even kind of just drip your glue mixture onto the whatever plastic surface you choose. And that helps make it a little thicker. <clears throat> I also discovered if you kind of add colors um, a little bit at a, at a time, you don't necessarily want to go over the top of them too much. But if you put different colors, like inside a cookie cutter or so forth, it will give it sort of a tie dye effect when it's dry. Mm -hmm. So that turns out really pretty. And I'm starting, as I said, with a rainbow. And I know in our world right now, there's been a lot of craziness, a lot happening, a lot of strange things that maybe, like life has changed. Um, and one of the my favorite things about the rainbow is it reminds me of one of God's promises. And in Genesis 9, 11, uh, God was talking to Noah and his family after they've been on the ark. And he was saying, I 
Genesis 9 11, God says, I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of the flood and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. So God was promising that he'd never again destroy, destroy the earth with a flood. And he gave us this sign, the rainbow that we see after it rains. Now I live in central Pennsylvania. We get a lot of rain, but that means sometimes we see some pretty amazing rainbows as well. And when I was younger, I used to be a little confused. I don't know about you, Sarah, but I would be like, but wait, we still have floods. Yeah, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> However, floods now are very localized. They don't destroy the entire earth. And so that's what God's promise means. He's not going to destroy the whole earth with a flood ever again. So I'm just about done with my rainbow for today. Oh, and one trick, sometimes it works a little better if you're making a rainbow to start in the middle with the size you want. I forgot to do that. But here's my rainbow. It looks so pretty. You can also use the cookie cutters and things. <clears throat> um, let's show one of those. Let's pick one. Right. Do you want to do it? Do you want a cookie cutter? So we have a lot of fun spring cookie cutters. Elizabeth loves baking sugar cookies. So again, uh, I mean, it's multi-purpose. You can use them for more than one thing. Um, but girls, so I think we forgot to mention too about letting them dry. These are gonna take um, a few hours to dry. So you'll have to set them in a place where they're not gonna get messed up, that none of your brothers or sisters little fingers are gonna get into them um, and make sure that they're dry before you try taking them off. But now, so Elizabeth did the free hand um, of the rainbow and now we're each gonna do like a little um, cookie cutter one. So you can watch us and see how we do that. Um, these are the ones that turn out a little thicker. And just so you know, if you're a perfectionist, um, these sometimes the, the glue, the colors will seep out of the ends. It's really okay. Just sometimes I just press the cookie cutter down and then after it's all dry, you can, um, peel the extra parts off. So I'm going to make a tulip. What are you going to make Elizabeth? So if you think about it, these are really fun. You could make them for all seasons, like Thanksgiving or Christmas, but it, it's really fun to have um, different shapes and stuff to do that have to do with the seasons. Um, the other day when we were practicing, I was trying to do some freehand stuff with a paintbrush. And if you're looking for e easy things to make without a, if you don't have your cookie cutters, um, I'm, the rainbow is really good. Um, I made a cloud. <laughs> I didn't really know what it was going to be. I think I was trying to make something else, but then it turned into a cloud and it was great. So sometimes you might start with one idea and it turns into another. So if you, as you can see, we're just kind of drizzling. And if you watch Elizabeth, she's like, I did the flower petal and uh, sorry, the flower part yellow and the bottom part green with the leaves. Elizabeth's doing a butterfly and she's um, doing those mixed colors using all everything she wants in there. The more color, the better, I always say. Agreed. Something like this, it's gonna be in your window and hopefully brighten someone's day. So we've been talking about colors and things. And as I said, the rainbow, reminds me of God's promise. Well, Sarah, I don't know if you know this or not, but one of my very favorite verses for my whole life has been, since high school at least, has been um, Philippians 1.6. And to me, this is another one of God's promises. And Philippians 1.6 says, and I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to, the, to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Hmm. And the reason I love that verse is sometimes in life, we can feel like, oh my goodness, what on earth? Why am I here? What is my purpose? Life is so crazy. But if you are here, you're still breathing. God has a purpose for your life mm -hmm. and he is going to keep that purpose and he promises to fulfill it. That's so awesome. I love just remembering that especially I think right now it's hard to have that hope and just wondering like what God is doing but 
um, we still have a purpose even today. <laughs> Loving your family, um, obeying your mom and dad the first time they ask and just trying to make their lives easier. Those are all things that we could and should be doing right now. And even I think these window clings, when you hang them up in your window, people are going to love seeing them as they walk by. You are spreading joy and cheer throughout your neighborhood. And hopefully, especially, I don't know, if you make um, rainbows, I'm really hoping that people are reminded of God's promise that he created the first rainbow as a promise to his people. And he has never broken that promise since. And he won't because he keeps all of his promises. So if he's going to not flood the entire earth again, never destroy it again, and he um, put a sign in the sky for that, just think of how much more important you are and your life and what he's going to do in and through you if you're just willing. Well, that brings me to one of my other favorite verses that is also a promise from God that um, so he's working in you, but Jeremiah 29, 11 says, for I know the plans I have for you declares the Lord plans of welfare and not for evil to give you a future and a hope. So again, God's got a plan for us. As long as we're alive, he's going to use us for that purpose. And he knows that plan, even though sometimes life does not make sense at all to us. Um, God has a plan and he will use it in our lives. So we're just about finished. Sorry, I know the cookie cutters had made it a little hard to see, but if you look at Sarah, she like drizzled some pink in her yellow tulip, which is a really cool idea. It'll look awesome when it dries. Um, we hope you have lots of fun with this. Don't forget to clean up your brushes, your bowls, anything else you use um, and clean up your mess. And then anywhere from like, four to maybe even up to 12 hours, these should be dry and ready to stick on your window. Yeah. Guys, we can't wait to see you post your pictures um, on Facebook, whoa, <laughs> Facebook or Instagram. I can't get myself in here. Okay. Um, we can't wait to see you post pictures and um, spread joy uh, around your neighborhood. Thanks for joining us today. Oh, I really, really loved doing that. <laughs> Watching you guys, that was so fun. I loved your cloud, I'm not gonna lie. I don't know if anyone can make something that good. And thank you so much for um, <laughs> sharing those verses. Um, they really, really, really encouraged me. And I think I agree with the rainbows. Put those in your windows, girls. I think that'll really encourage a lot of people because a lot of people are like walking outside right now and everything. So um, also wish that face gram was a thing. I know, right? We should make it. <laughs> you and me, Casey. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you so much, Sarah. And thank you, Elizabeth. Also, um, the girls are wanting to know, what is the name of your baby? Are you allowed to say? Well, if we had one picked out for sure, I would tell you, but we don't even know yet. <laughs> Elizabeth's two and a half year old. She has a new name for her every day. It's been Gomer, Fred, <laughs> Lucy, Matilda, and I think the most recent one is Margaret. So maybe we'll keep the naming up to her. Personally, I really like Fred. That was very good. Very, very good stuff. Very good. Um, so now I have some announcements, right? You know yeah. it. Take it away. Yeah, I do. Um, so I'm sure you guys already know what the deal is right now. We're doing an awesome lip sync contest video situation. And I want to give a little shout out. I don't know if I'm allowed to do this, but I'm going to, to Kenzie, because I got to watch yours and I didn't get to watch all of them, but I just saw yours and I was filled with joy because it was so crazy and fun. And I really enjoyed your hairbrush, Mike. So for you other girls, make sure that if you, you if, whoa. You can learn the lyrics to the song Crazy that is on our True Girl album. And all you need is a hairbrush mic and a video camera. And you could win $250 of True Girl stuff and the chance to make an appearance in our Crazy Hair Party live in front of the world that's happening next Friday. I thought it was Saturday, but it was Friday this whole time. So the first step is learn the lyrics, and then shoot the craziest lip sync video possible. Crazy hair, crazy clothes, crazy place inside your house. And that's all. And then enter the grand prize. The details are gonna be in the link that is posted in the description on this YouTube page. And maybe we can send it in the comments too. 
Sounds like a pretty good deal though. I mean, it's a really good deal. And that should remind you guys, if you haven't done it already, that you have to sign up and be a part of the party. So make sure you do not forget to do that. Like she said, it's May 1st, which is next Friday. That's coming so fast. I didn't realize it was that. It's close. really soon. Yeah. Oh, yeah I'm excited. Nervous. I know, right? It's going to be fun. But yeah, so check this out. It'll be May 1st, um, this Friday, May 1st, next Friday, from 7 p.m., to 9 p.m. and that's eastern standard time so if you were at the pajama party well not at the pajama party but if you tuned in for the pajama party you know that it was a blast we're trying to have the same amount of fun not even the same amount of fun more fun so that's right fun. we have to top it we have to we have to top it so you played bingo and stuff last time you don't know what you're gonna get this time but it's gonna be great so make sure you sign up for that at mytruegirl.com slash crazy hair i believe all right, well, I think this is the end of the story for today. So you guys enjoy your weekend. Um, also, don't forget next Tuesday at 7.30, Born to be Brave is gonna be going live. So bring your brothers, bring your fathers, bring your uncles, bring your grandpas or your male pets. I always say that because I don't wanna leave them out. Uh, <laughs> and without further ado, we will see you. You got it, you got it. Aww. Hey, hey, hey. Oh. See you on Monday. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs> Bye. Jesus is mine.